Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So today we're gonna do an Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial and we're gonna learn how to export HD video for YouTube using Adobe Premiere Pro. Now I'm gonna be using Adobe Premiere CC 2014. I do have CC 2015 on my other machine, but there's not any real significant difference. In fact, even if you're using Adobe Premiere Pro CS6, this tutorial will still work for you because none of the features for exporting video have changed. So we're gonna go up to File and Export Media here in the menu, and you can use uh, Command M, Control M if you're on Windows to do that as a shortcut. And what that will do is it'll take your work area as long as the timeline is selected and everything that you had will be here to export. Now you could trim this down if you knew where the end was and you wanted to do that and you just had something that went over, you could trim this down. But I recommend just exporting your entire timeline because you've already done your trimming and your editing. So you'll wanna leave that alone for the most part. Now, the other thing here is the format. H.264 is what YouTube wants to use as the encoding format. In most cases, if you're using an HD video camera like a DSLR, that'll also be the encoding format that your camera is using. Now, it might be exporting a .mov file or a movie file. You're gonna to wanna to upload an MP4 to YouTube. So we're already set up for that, and these are some custom settings that I have. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the preset that Adobe Premiere has for YouTube, and we already know that this is 1080p HD video, so that's what we're gonna select. Now, if you have 720p video, you would select that if you were shooting like 60 frames a second, uh, 720p in an older DSLR camera for some reason, that's what you would do. If you want to downsample from 1080p to 720p, you can, but you can't upsample to something like 4K. It's just not gonna work out that way. So those are the things you're gonna to wanna to do. The next thing is we need to pick an output name for our video. I'm going to uh, just call this export. Or actually, we're gonna call it Premiere Pro export. We're gonna be specific. So we're calling this Premiere Pro export and I'm putting it in my tutorials folder. And that's just how we're gonna do it. I want you to pay close attention to the summary here. I always toggle this down for a reason because I like seeing that my settings for my source and my output are matching. You can see that the frame rates and everything else for these are matching up perfectly. You wanna make sure that everything here is syncing up for the most part. So that's what we wanna do. To keep our video at the best possible quality, we just need to make sure that this is all consistent. Now down here, you have a lot of panels. The only one we're really gonna pay attention to is the video panel. We don't wanna change the audio settings. These are fine. The video saying preset from YouTube is gonna work fine for the most part. We're just gonna modify it to get the best possible quality. So one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check use maximum render quality. And then you see the target bit rate here. Now I'm not gonna get into any complicated explanations about what this is, but this is gonna determine a couple of things, the file size and the quality. YouTube typically recommends in their um, help document that you use a target bit rate of eight and we're not going to do that though. You see that cuts the file size in half and if I was on a slower connection or I you know, wasn't worried about having the highest quality, I would use this. And this is fine for standard quality and also if you're in a hurry. But if you have a better connection and you want really good quality, I recommend using 16 as the target bit rate and I usually set the maximum bit rate to about 50. You'll notice that the 50 didn't affect my file size and I can move this up and down and the file size isn't gonna change. So I'm just gonna set those to 16 and 50 and those would be my typical settings. Now here we have the bitrate encoding and it's set to VBR pass one right now. That's going to mean that it's going to just run through this one time. I usually set the VBR pass two if I want it to be the best quality that it can be and that's just gonna really help it out. Now this is gonna make the render time longer but it doesn't make the file size any bigger. So those are our settings. Now for multiplexer, you can use that just to verify that it's gonna be an MP4, but you can already see that in the output name. So we're fine there. We already know that our audio settings are correct. We're not gonna change any of that. So we're good here. Profile, you do want that set to high and that's a default setting. You don't wanna change the default setting of the level either. But if you are shooting 4K video, this number will not be 4.2, it'll probably be 5.1 or 5.2. So just understand that part of it. 
I'm not going to worry about keyframing distance. I'm not going to worry about any of this. You do have an option to input additional metadata into the video file. This might help you with video SEO. Some people believe that works. Other people don't believe it works. I will leave that to you to decide, or I'll do a different video about that. But you could do that here and that may or may not help you but it will help you in keeping organized when you decide to search for this in something like Adobe Bridge. So keep that in mind as well. Now, in another video, I'll talk about using the publish setting for logging into YouTube. The reason that I don't recommend using this setting is sometimes your internet connection will interfere with that. So I usually just go ahead and export the video to the desktop and then upload to YouTube from there. We have two options for that. We can hit Q or we can hit export. If you hit export, it'll go ahead and do it from here in a Premiere Pro, and a lot of people are doing that. But if you're like me and you still need to edit other video files, or you need to work in Premiere Pro to do something else like get your thumbnail image out of a single frame or what have you, then you'll wanna use Q and send it to Adobe Media Encoder. Once it sends it to Adobe Media Encoder, that application is gonna launch, and then we can begin in exporting our video um, as a background process and we'll be able to continue working in Adobe Premiere Pro on our other projects. So here in Adobe Media Encoder, our file is ready to go and all we have to do is select it and push this play button. Now I've set up a feature where this will automatically start encoding in two minutes if I leave it idle and I have files here because sometimes I'll walk away or I'll forget to push the play button, something like that'll happen. So I'll just hit play here in Adobe Media Encoder and it's gonna start rendering our video. And based on my high quality settings, I expect that it's gonna take a while even though this is a five minute video, but it will depend on the resources your computer has. In my case, I have my browser open taking up RAM. I'm also screen recording right now. So I don't even have the full resources of my computer to use for this. And I've set the quality very high for this video. So it's going to take a while. Just depending on how long your video is and what the quality needs to be, you can adjust your settings and it'll probably render faster. Also, if you're on a newer computer with more RAM, I'm only using 12 gigs right now and I'm on an older iMac. If you're on one of the newer machines with faster processors, better video cards, etc., then it won't necessarily take you as long. But I'm gonna go ahead and pause this since you just have an understanding that this is saying where the video is going, we know what our settings are, and we know how long it's gonna take now. So that's how we actually export video for YouTube in HD quality and how you want to do that using Adobe Premiere Pro. If you have any questions about exporting video in Adobe Premiere Pro, please leave them in the comment section. I'll try and answer as many of them as I can. I'll also do other videos that talk about how to use the publish feature and just some different settings and things you can do in Adobe Premiere Pro. But this is the basics you need to know to go ahead and put out a video today if that's something you've been struggling with or you didn't know what settings are going to give you the best quality for your YouTube videos. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching and don't forget, create something awesome today.